noisy um, ventilation for Philips. So uh, a short background of myself. So again, I'm uh, Valerick Makamiyag. So just my email address as well. So if you have uh, any concern uh, or any questions, so you can send an email to me. So I'm happy to, to answer your, all your questions, okay? So I'm, uh, I'm a Filipino, so I'm from Philippines, so um, uh, bear with my, my, my English. If I uh, uh, speak uh, too fast or just let me know, okay? So my name is Valerie Makabihag, I'm a um, respiratory therapist. I used to work in the hospital before, uh, before joining Philips um, um, company. Okay, so to start with my uh, presentation, so uh, uh, nowadays, so we're using um, non-invasive ventilation approach in the hospital. So one of our campaign, not only in, uh, in, the, in my hometown, but all over the globe, to, uh, to start with non-invasive ventilation as a first line of uh, ventilatory intervention. Okay, so, uh, so let's start with uh, a short history of non-invasive of uh, ventilator. Okay. So I just want to show you some overview like uh, Dr. Sun uh, showed us earlier. So before they are using the iron lung. So the principle behind of this one is uh, it's a big machine that uh, generates negative pressure to help the patient to breathe, to create uh, negative pressure to inflate the lungs. So this one is uh, popular during the 1940s to 1980s uh, year to uh, treat some, um, especially for the, for the uh, children, mostly children are affected with paralysis, muscle paralysis. So it's, an, it's a virus uh, that attacks the respiratory uh, muscles. So this one is uh, popular in 1940s and 1950s for polio. And additional, so these are the right side is our uh, is the uh, history of ventilator from iron lung negative pressure to uh, 1960s the the rise of positive pressure ventilation and until now we're using the positive pressure ventilation they already eliminated uh, the uh, negative pressure ventilation. <laughs> Okay, so my next slide, so what types of ventilatory methods or approach are we using nowadays? So in, in the hospital setup, we have two uh, ventilatory support in supporting to, uh, to uh, help the patient to breathe or to alleviate the, the breathing, to decrease the work of breathing. So we have the non-invasive ventilation, which is uh, uh, one of the... Before joining Philips, one of the popular in terms of non-invasive ventilation is the Respironics. So they invented 1985 the first positive pressure ventilation to treat the obstructive sleep apnea. So they call that sleep um, um, devices. So non-invasive ventilation. So basically, this one using the ETT or um, oh, non-invasive ventilation support without using invasive ADT or tracheostomy. So we're dealing with the pressure, so we need to exert a higher pressure, atmospheric pressure, to open up the lungs. And uh, it provides from um, nose, mouth, or face, different interface for you to be able to deliver the positive pressure to the patient. So this one, non-invasive, and we have invasive. Invasive is uh, basically is use of uh, endotracheal tube or tracheostomy for the long-term patient. So both of them, nowadays, most of the ventilator in the market are using different types of monitoring for you to be able to know if the patient is responding very well to the ventilator or not. 
So they have different, like Dr. Soon discussed, discussed to us earlier, so we have different um, settings, different monitorings for the patient, for the ventilator. Okay, so I have one question. So, what do you prefer to use, non-invasive or invasive ventilation? You can raise your hands. So, majority, if you're using non-invasive versus invasive ventilation. Non-invasive. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Okay, so um, my next slide, so like what I've said earlier, non-invasive ventilation as a first line of intervention. Why? What is the reason behind why we are, um, in, why we are uh, um, introducing non-invasive ventilation as a first line? So, okay. So, um, how can we achieve the best so non-invasive ventilation. So in in uh, non in delivering or uh, initiation of non-invasive ventilation, we have to consider different things. So we have the uh, define. So the physician must be skilled, or we have the clinician skilled. So in my hometown, we have uh, doctors, respiratory therapists, and nurses. So these three uh, clinicians are working together to deliver the non-invasive ventilation successfully. So for the, for the doctors, pulmonary doctors, they are taking care of chest x-ray, assessment of the patient, blood gas, and we are, the, we are RT, we are taking care of machine setup and also what type of mask to be used. And nurses, basically, the nurses are taking care of um, pressure source or caused by the, the, the mask and monitoring of the patient. Okay, and an addition of that, so instead, uh, um, aside from uh, clinician skills, so you have to use the perfect device, right device for non-invasive ventilation. Okay, so we will discuss this one by one as we go along. So right patient, then perfect device, uh, right patient, I'm sorry, so you have to deal with your right patient, and then perfect device, equipment for non-invasive ventilation, and the equipment must have um, a dedicated ventilator with leak because one of the challenges for uh, non-invasive ventilation is leak. So if you have leakage all over the face, all over the circuit, so you cannot deliver the right, the correct pressure to the patient as well. And type of circuitry with humidification and type of mask. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So one of the goals of non-invasive ventilation is uh, is avoid intubation. So what is the reason why behind? Why do we need to avoid intubation? Okay. And uh, one of our goals is increase PaO2, decrease the PCO2, and alleviate dyspnea or lessen the dyspnea and decrease work of breathing, and unloading the respiratory muscles and allowing them to rest. So these are the 
but the, the most um, goals of non-invasive in ventilation is avoiding intubation. So we will discuss this in details later. Okay. So um, one of the one of the complications for uh, that's why we need to uh, to avoid intubation or delay the intubation. So because one of the reason why because complication of invasive ventilation and artificial airway complication is such as this uh, nasal ET can cause bleeding and necrosis. So oral ET, uh, pressure necrosis in lips for intubations, airway trauma during insertions of the ETT, endotracheal tube. And for the under inflation of the ET cuff, so these are the complications. And if you um, excessive uh, pressure, if you have the excessive ET cuff pressure, these are the complications as well. Okay, so additional is the um, one of the complication in invasive is the accumulation of infection. So, uh, a VAP is one of the common problem with intubated patient. Okay, so VAP, ventilator associated pneumonia, second to most uh, common nosocomial infection. So, and then the main cause of VAP is aspiration of bacteria and that have colonized in the upper. So, if you intubated the patient, the bacteria will uh, high tendency to accumulate inside the lungs, causing um, to treat the patient, um, to, to, uh, to difficult to treat the patient, to lead the patient to the ventilator. And greater risk of intubated patient because the lower airway is left exposed, so the higher risk of infection. Based on the research, so up to 70% of patient intubated, uh, high risk of infection. So that's why if, you, if you're trying to uh, to delay the, non, the intubation and try the non-invasive uh, way of a ventilatory approach. So uh, the, the, high, the, the high chance of um, avoiding this complication for invasive ventilation. Okay, so what is the right device for non invasive ventilation? So because nowadays, um, most in the market, most of the ventilator has the, um, are offering non-invasive ventilation approach and invasive ventilation approach as well. So which, which ventilators or which kind of device uh, are perfect for non-invasive ventilation? So let's see. So, uh, but uh, according to the research from the Spain as well, so unfortunately not all ventilators perform the same way as, uh, as per Professor Belda from Spain. And uh, okay. Okay. So uh, one of the requirements for you to be able to deliver the non-invasive ventilation perfectly or successfully so the ventilator must have a high turbine performance. So better pressurization, better quick response and triggering uh, delays. And we have 
is we have the mode enhancers during um, uh, non-invasive ventilation for patient comfort. And we have leak monitoring and compensation. Okay, and uh, we have uh, synchronization in the presence of leaks. Because like what I've said earlier, one of the main problem in non-invasive ventilation is the leak. So if you have leak, you cannot deliver or the ventilator will, cannot perform um, uh, cannot perform well if you have leaks. And uh, quick pressurization and triggering as well. Okay, so this one is conducted in uh, Valencia, Spain, so with uh, some of the doctors, researchers. So for, for them to be able to know uh, which ventilator is capable of um, delivering an invasive ventilation approach. So they tried different types of ventilator uh, and also one of the ventilators that they are um, uh, uh, conducting is the Philips. So here's the, the result. So um, here at the graph here. So this one is the pressurization. So this one is the baseline of the ventilator and then trigger of the patient and then the quick response of pressure delivery. So the, the better better ventilator must must at, must at least uh, deliver at least 300 PTP to 500 pressure ratio time product. So uh, in this result, so for the PTP 500, so one of the best uh, quick response pressure is the B680 and the B60 and the Trilogy 202, the smaller one. And in terms of triggering delays, here at the right side, so the B680 stand out uh, for, for some ventilators. Okay, the most important here is the um, also the triggering delays in the presence of leak because if you have leak so you cannot deliver the non-invasive ventilation so uh, just want to show you some uh, non-invasive challenges so uh, here are the challenges for non-invasive failure to ventilate due to leaks then skin irritation or uh, pressure source caused by the mask and we have the nasal bridge uh, lacerations for the long-term patient um, receiving non-invasive ventilation. And you have eye irritation, too much pressure, and you have a discomfort because of the pressure. The, the patient cannot tolerate the pressure that you, you set. And gastric inflation, so too much pressure as well. And nasal and oral dryness and claustrophobic reaction. Okay, so how do you deal with, with your patient receiving non invasive ventilation with leaks? So how, how do you deal? That's correct, that's correct. Yeah. So, so if you have leaks all over the face, so what will you do? During non invasive ventilation, what will you do? You tighten the, the strap? You 
tighten the strap. Then, so if you tighten the strap, what will happen? Eventually, in the in the next hours, next 48 hours, what will happen to your patient? Very good. That's correct. So, uh, if you tighten the, the the mass strap, so eventually your patient will uh, have the starting the redness all over the face, and um, in more than 48 hours, it can cause laceration of the nasal bridge and then uh, necrosis in the facial. So. Uh, okay. The reason why we need to to tighten up the mask, okay, just to eliminate the leaks. Okay, because if you have leaks, the ventilator will not synchronize to the patient breathing as well. So what will happen? They have a desynchronization of uh, uh, breathing. So and then it will lead to non-invasive failure because the patient cannot tolerate the non-invasive ventilation uh, approach. So in that case, we need to tighten up the mask. So the problem can cause um, pressure source laceration of the nasal bridge. Okay. So the reason why I, I, I uh, highlight the failure to ventilate due to leaks because our next slide is uh, is a journal published by Edizione Minerva, so Medica. So this one was published um, recently. So the most common uh, patient ventilator asynchronous, according to the research, is include the auto triggering. This one in non-invasive ventilation because of the leak. Okay, so a good. A good example of that is this one. So the patient, the ventilator, the, this one is the uh, patient effort, this one, activity, right from. So this one is your pressure. So the ventilator deliver, but in the next, the ventilator delivers again, but the patient is not uh, asking for breathing because the, the reason why is the uh, ventilator mistakenly recognize leaks as a patient trigger. So the ventilator will uh, uh, deliver breathing even the patient is not asking for breathing. So that's the reason why that uh, happened the synchronization between the patient and the ventilator. Okay, so an additional addition um, journal published um, from, uh, from intensive care, respiratory care. So the patient, the, the ventilator must design with a patient um, a ventilator synchrony. So give uh, more comfort to the patient. So the ventilator must have an improved patient ventilator synchrony for us to be delivered the non-invasive ventilation successfully. Okay, so the solution, so we have the solution, so uh, based on the mathematically algorithm of the, the leaks, so for us to, uh, to deal with leaks, so the, the, the machine must have the auto-adaptive leak compensation. The machine must have leak compensation and adapt automatic adaptive of inspiratory triggering. So in terms of the leaks, so the, the ventilator will automatically adjust and uh, based on the uh, next inspiratory triggering and adaptive expiratory cycling. So in, in, in uh, for Philips for us, we have the algorithm of auto trap. We call that auto trap algorithm as well. So this technology is, 
is used in non-invasive ventilation to deal with leaks during non-invasive ventilation. So this one is, the, is um, basically it's adapting to changing breathing patterns and dynamic leaks. So this one is the very uh, efficient and very uh, very uh, uh, helpful helpful um, feature in Philips during an invasive ventilation. Okay. So, um, additional journal, so published by uh, ATS Journal in the 2013. So, if, if the patient and the ventilator is not synchronized, it, it promotes a ventilator, uh, ventilator dyssynchrony, promote muscle fatigue, and overload in discomfort of the patient, leading to a non-invasive failure. So, if we don't have the right device, and then uh, if we don't have the, the ventilator that's capable of dealing with leaks, so even though the clinician's knowledge is very, even though the clinicians are knowledgeable in, of non-invasive ventilation, but if you don't, if you don't have the right device for non-invasive, you cannot also perform the non-invasive ventilation successfully. So I just want to give you some uh, overview because Okay. Uh, overview. So additional uh, information selecting of breathing circuits. So in dealing with non-invasive ventilation, um, I recommend, I highly recommend to use the uh, humidifiers with, uh, with, with water, with heated humidifiers. So I, I, I uh, discourage to use uh, HMA filter if you're using uh, our Philips single circuit non-invasive ventilation. So to give you some overview, so these are the uh, set up for non-invasive ventilation. If you're using the heated wire humidification or a uh, passover humidification with, without uh, heated wire and no humidification at all for uh, non-invasive ventilation. And uh, okay, so this is the set up for uh, with heated wire. Okay. And uh, this is the setup for uh, non-heated wire or a passive off, pass over uh, humidification. And uh, this is uh, no humidification at all. Okay. Okay. According to this, if you're using the non-invasive ventilation less than two hours, so no need for for humidifiers. Or if the patient, if, if, you, if you notice if your patient has uh, having a, a lot of secretions, might as well from the beginning, you can use uh, active humidification to loosen up the plant as well. Okay, but if the patient in a condition is not that uh, much secretions or phlegm, so uh, you can use the non-invasive ventilation in less than two hours without any humidification. So this is the second. Okay, so uh, I think these slides will be uh, discussed by by doctor. So uh, just just to give you some um, overview of the, the appropriate mass. Yeah. So. Okay. So we have the clinician skills. So the the clinician must must be knowledgeable for non-invasive ventilation, and then we have the perfect device for non-invasive ventilation as well. Uh, to deal with the leaks and uh, to give more patient comfort. And number three is the 
uh, right interface to your patient because um, one of the problem in, in non-invasive failure is the mask. If you if you're using um, uh, uh, not so good mask for your non for your patient, it will lead to non-invasive failure as well. Okay, so how do you choose an appropriate mask? So that's the question. So, uh, how do you choose an appropriate mask? So, here, so again, some challenges of the mask. So, if you have failure to ventilate due to leaks, so we tackled that earlier. Skin irritation and pressure sores, so this one, for the stage four, um, uh, stage four, and uh, good example of the uh, caused by the, the mask. Then, nasal breeze redness and ulceration, eye irritation and discomfort to the patient, gas gastric too much pressures, and nasal and oral dryness and prosopovic. So this one is um, caused by the, basically by the oral nasal mask. So, yep. Do you think uh, how many percent of non-invasive failure are, uh, are related to mask? Can you guess the, the four? Which, which, uh, which of these are the a percentage of uh, non-invasive failure uh, related to mask. Anyone who can answer, I'll give you the, the latest a 541 model of mask. So I have here the So this is the example of our model for, for the for the new mask, the AI 541. So this one is the a combination of the full face mask and the oral nasal mask for you to be able to, to bypass the the nasal bridge. So all you have to do is take off the oral nasal mask, then change by um, under nose fashion. So you can bypass the the nasal bridge because one of the problem in um, the, the, the sore has started the, uh, start here at the bony part. So anybody can answer. I will give you the, the one set <laughs> of our new uh, okay. guess. <laughs> so which name? Okay, guess. D. Close. <laughs> Next. <laughs> close, close. Nice track, close. Letter E. Who says E? No, no. Uh, all of the above? Or? Okay, any? Any guess? Okay, so the, the, the right question is, uh, the right answer is uh, 37 point, uh, 37.5 percent of non-invasive failures, so uh, related to the mask. Okay, so very, very crucial uh, decision. So finding the right uh, mask to your patient uh, will lead you to successful non-invasive ventilation, but if you cannot uh, find the right interface to your patient, it will lead to non-invasive ventilator failures up to 37.5% based on the research. Okay, so I need to put it back to my bag. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice try.
Okay. Um, next is um, one of the common, uh, uh, you commonly used in the hospital, is the oronasal mask. So when you say oronasal mask, it covers the nose and the mouth. So let's see what what uh, are the pressure points. So using the nasal uh, nasal oronasal mask. Okay. So the pressure points here is the forehead, the nasal bridge, and the inferior lip. So it's okay. Okay, so what do you think can be the result of these pressure points? So the result is the pressure source, laceration of the nasal bridge, basically. So also, I just want to give you some um, overview of uh, risk factors for hospital acquired. So before you do the non-invasive ventilation, you do some assessment, right? So you have to assess the age as well, the trauma. So I just give you some overview because this one is your, your topic. So this one is the poor nutrition, blood pressure, and extended use of non-invasive ventilation. Okay. So an overview again. So like what I said earlier. So even after only few hours of ventilation, uh, frequent complication ranging to 2 to 23%. So if you're using non-invasive ventilation with a uh, not properly masked, so in more than 48 hours, this percentage reached to 70%. And extreme cases involve the surrounding areas, including the, the nose and the chin. So this one, if, you're, if you tighten too much the, the mask, so this one will lead this one to um, severe necrosis. And uh, give you a background, stage one. So this one is the intact skin. So redness started. So and uh, stage four. This one is the expose of bony uh, muscles and tendons. So a good example of that is this one. So I have an, I have an experience uh, in Malaysia. So back in Malaysia, we had a patient, uh, a long-term patient, receiving non-invasive ventilation, and they are using. Um, um, dual circuit, non-invasive ventilation, meaning if you're using dual circuit, non-invasive, meaning no leak. So that's why the, the clinicians are trying to to eliminate the leaks, but the problem is it can cause laceration of the nasal bridge in the, in the, um, in the more than 48 hours. So this one is the example. Okay. So how to prevent? So to give you an overview, so assess the patient, like what I said earlier, single, select the proper mask design, size, mask, uh, manage the mask, not too tight. So perform skin care, early intervention. This one is performed by the, the nurses for taking care of the, 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 the source and taking care of monitoring the patients. And perform skin and early care and early interventions. And rotate the mask if you have the uh, uh, so uh, I, I encourage to, to have a rotation, so rotation, okay, just to, to bypass the bony part. But if you have the, the new model of the mask, the 8541, so no need to, to use the, the full face mask. So you can bypass the, the bony part of the nose. And uh, so choosing the right mask for your patient, so this one. And we have different um, um, sizing tools for you to be able to know what type of interface to be used for each individual patient. And this one is the example as well. So we have different sizing tools. Okay, 
here and pro to properly fit the orange mask and mask fitting so this one this is one is the, the correct one and the uh, rotation like what I've said earlier So this one is will be your topic, right? This one is the A541 mask. Okay, so we have the um, clinician skills, perfect device for non invasive ventilation, and we have the right interface. And aside from that, we have uh, the machine must equip of the leak monitoring. So uh, we here we're using the 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 leak. Okay, for Philips we encourage leak. So in some ventilators, they don't encourage leak or they, uh, they don't accept for the leak. But for Philips, we're accepting leak. The reason why is to, to uh, offload the, the too much pressure that we, uh, that we are exerting to the patient face. So here, for you to be able to know if you rightly position the mask or not, uh, the machine itself will tell you if the mask is too tight or loose. Okay, for example, uh, you're using oral nasal mask and then you you put the mask too tight the machine will tell you a you have to do loosen up the strap and because you, you put the mask too, too tight so this one is your uh, monitoring values okay for the mask leak so the the acceptable range for the leak is this one the table here so if it is uh, six less than uh, seven, the mass is too tight. Okay, seven to twenty-five is just right. But for me as an RT, uh, we uh, we basically I put always to fifteen, fifteen to twenty. So it's it's a uh, it's it's a very comfortable to the patient, and it's it's not uh, causing any uh, source to the patient uh, uh, face as well. Fifteen to twenty is uh, it's a it's a best um, uh, figures for. Uh, for intentional leaks and uh, more than 60 so maybe it's too loose it's too tight it's too loose so you have to reposition again your mask so you have your reference here or guide for you to be able to know if you rightly position the mask or not so this Okay, so this afternoon we will have a workshop, so face to face with the machine. So I'll, I'll show it to you the how the 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 functions of this monitoring uh, later. Okay, and uh, so any questions before we proceed to uh, my my last uh, slide for non-invasive ventilation modes of ventilation? I have a That's a good question. Uh, 
Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. So uh, basically, in the market, um, okay. Uh, basically, in the market, uh, most of the ventilator, like what I said earlier, most of the ventilator in the market, they are um, uh, offering non-invasive ventilation. But the difference is, they're using the non-vented mask. So for Philips, we're using vented mask with leaks. So we encourage leak, then uh, they don't encourage leak. So that's why they try to put too much pressure on the face to eliminate the leaks. But for Philips, we have the leak for us to uh, to eliminate the or to alleviate at least to lessen the source caused by the, the mask. So your question, if you're using the, the Philips ventilator and then you're using different kind of mask, you cannot see the patient leak directly. So what we, you can see is the total leak. So you will never know if the leak is coming from the face, coming from the circuit, or coming from everywhere. So you don't have an accurate uh, measurement of uh, uh, leaks all over your face if you're using none Philips uh, brand okay but still you can still use the non Philips uh, mask but you have to clo to monitor closely your patient okay like for example if you're using um, different mask not Philips you have to uh, monitor because from the beginning it will it give it will gives you a uh, value Okay, so around 15, 18 value for the leaks. Okay, so you have to mo closely monitor the patient of um, if there is a uh, oh, uh, having a difficulty of breathing or cannot receive the, the pressure you, you want. So you have to closely monitor. But still, you can still use the, the, the non Philips brand. <laughs> What you can uh, what you can uh, uh, monitor is the total, not the patient. If you're using Philips, you can uh, monitor directly the patient activity leaks. Okay, so any questions? Okay, so my next slide is my my last slide is the modes of ventilation. So what are the types of ventilation that, that uh, we are using for an invasive ventilation delivery? Okay, so let's start with the most. So these are the modes of uh, ventilations, uh, basic modes and basic settings. So are you using this these modes of ventilation? What types of ventilation modes of are you using during an invasive ventilation? Do you mind? Uh, just give me at least two modes, your favorite modes of ventilation of for non invasive. Sorry, the back. Okay, so basically we have the CPAP and BiPAP. So by BiPAP, by level, okay, so we have two types of strategy. So this strategy we have the BiPAP ST and the BiPAP PCB. For the basic settings, uh, we have the IPAP, EPAP, and RATE, FIO2, and some uh, rest. But this one is the uh, basic settings for the non invasive ventilation. And we have the mode enhancers as well, CFLEX and RISE, for the, to give more patient comfort. Okay, we will discuss that one by one as we go along. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with the CPAP. When you say CPAP, you have a continuous pressure, continuous positive airway pressure. 
okay you set one pressure only you say CPAP so this one is your CPAP pressure okay and uh, this one is the example of your uh, pressure curves so here you have your CPAP continuous pressure so sometimes uh, if you set too much pressure to your patient so a good example is that is a uh, um, yeah, this is my, uh, okay, I cannot see any uh, example for that one. So a good example is the CPAP. So you're like a driving a car, so like 100 kilometer, 120 kilometer per hour uh, speed of the car. And then you roll down your window, and then you stick your head out, and then you breathe in. You have, you're easy for you to breathe in, okay? Because you're breathing in at 120 kilometers per hour speed. So that's the CPAP uh, concept analogy, okay? But in terms of breathing out, it's hard for you to breathe out. Sometimes you can, uh, you see your patient uh, fighting against the ventilator during ex active exhalation. The patient is fighting, okay, during exhalation because the patient is exhaling against 120 kilometer uh, uh, per hour speed. So imagining that. So okay, you exert um, uh, high settings for the CPAP, then the patient can can inhale, good in inhalation, but <clears throat> in terms of exhalation, it's very difficult for him. Okay. Okay, so so do you experience the uh, to your patient that uh, the patient is is having problem during active exhalation? Have you uh, have an experience? And what is your uh, remedy? And how how do you deal with that um, a problem or issues? I'll give my uh, nebulizer here. Just Any? Okay. So uh, for for this type of uh, concern, so we need uh, some of the clinicians. They decrease the pressure, okay, to to uh, to alleviate or to lessen the 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 problem during active exhalation. But the problem with that, if you lessen the pressure, you cannot uh, attain the the pressure therapy you want to your patient. So we have the solution for that. We have the mode enhancers. We call this C-flex. Okay. So what is the C-flex means? C-flex. C-flex is a uh, it's a, um, it's, a, it's a special valve inside the machine that's automatically open up during active exhalation to give comfort to the patient during active exhalation. Okay. So the C-flex is like. Uh, Stepping off the acceleration, the speed, okay, during during inhalation, 120 km per hour speed. During exhalation, stepping off the the acceleration to slow down the, the car to patient to breathe. Okay, the to dog to breathe, to breathe out during active exhalation. So a good example for this one, to give more patient comfort. So this one. This one is our CPAP pressure therapy level, straight. Then during active exhalation, so you have three settings. Okay, so you have one, two, three. The higher the number, the higher the valve opens. Okay, so if you ask me what is the, the default or what is the proper setting for the C flex, that I don't know. Okay, the, the clinicians, uh, you will be the one to, to know if the, what is the right. Uh, right uh, setting for your patient. Maybe you can ask your patient, Mom, Sir, are you okay with the comfort level number one, number two, or number three? 
If the patient is comfortable with level number two, so we stick with uh, level number two. So that's the simplex. And you like level two, I think you can. Well, level two, I think you can. Well, level two, I think you So any question for the CPAP? CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. So if you have uh, any uh, question, just send an email or hopefully by, uh, by, by this year or by hopefully by this year or next year. So maybe you can do some uh, trial to your, uh, to your patient for you to be able to be familiarized more of the non-invasive ventilation approach. And I'm I am and I'm uh, happy to uh, to do or to conduct a, any uh, clinical trial to your patient. Okay. So our next is BiPAP PCV. So are you using pipe BiPAP? BiPAP. Yes. Okay. So BiPAP. So let's start with the BiPAP PCV. Okay, so for the BiPAP PCV, like what I've said earlier, we have the basic settings. So the most um, uh, set, the, the basic settings for the IPAP, for the BiPAP is the IPAP and the EPAP. What is the, what is the IPAP means? So what is the IPAP? Okay, so basically IPAP is the inspiratory positive airway pressure. So this one, is the IPAP is responsible in um, promoting tidal volume. You increase the IPAP, you increase the pulmonary volume, increase the pressure, you decrease the CO2. So increase IPAP, increase pulmonary volume, decrease carbon dioxide. So this one is responsible for your carbon dioxide removal. Okay, and okay, so if you want to promote oxygenation to your patient, so you have the EPAP, EPAP expiratory positive area pressure. This one is uh, dealing is uh, is um, responsible in promoting oxygenation. So you have your carbon dioxide removal, the IPAP, and you have the EPAP for promoting oxygenation. In between of these two, the IPAP and the EPAP, in between of them, is your pressure support or your pressure boost. So, like for example, you have a 12 or of IPAP, and then you have a six of six of EPAP. So in the middle, you have the six pressure support. So it's 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 up to the physicians. Is um, what is your priority? Oxygenation or carbon dioxide removal? Okay, so uh, and for the uh, PCB, you have additional setting. You have the rate, oxygen, and then the I time. So if you have an I time, so meaning uh, you have a fixed I time if you're using PCB, like assist control mode. 
what you set is what you get. So if you have the I time of 1.0 here, so this one is the patient trigger. So the patient trigger a breath, the ventilator deliver. Okay, and then you have an I time of 1.0. It will last to 1.0. If the patient wants to exhale, or the patient wants to, to prolong the inspiratory time or the I time, he cannot do that because you have a fixed I time of 1.0 or based on your settings. So if the patient triggered 1.0, machine triggered 1.0, so it will last to 1.0 setting. So this one is fixed. Basically, this one is used for uh, uh, patient with restrictive lungs or uh, uh, stiff lungs. So this one is the perfect uh, modes for the for that for those patients. So this one is the good example of what I'm trying to say earlier. So the patient I time here, then the patient here. So uh, if you see this one, the, the sharp tooth at the edge, meaning the patient want to exhale, but he cannot do the exhalation because you, he needs or he needs to, to finish the 1.0 setting. So if you see this one, the, the, the sharp tooth at the edge, you can adjust the I time or you can shift the patient to BiPAP ST. Okay, so you can shift to, you can adjust your eye time or shift to BiPAP ST. So here you have the spontaneous in time. Okay, so if you, if you can uh, notice here, they have the same setting IPAP, EPAP, rate, eye time, O2, rise. So they are the same, basically 100% the same setting. But the only difference is the eye time. So what is the eye time for the ST? So you have the machine triggered fix 1.0 if you set 1.0 and you have the patient trigger variable. Okay, so what is what that this means? So for example here, so the, the ventilator deliver 1.0 I time and then the patient trigger, the patient wants shorter I time. So the patient has a full control of, of his I time. So if the patient wants to more to do more prolonged inspiratory time the patient will automatically adjust for the patient demand. If the patient wants to an early or short I time, the machine will automatically adjust for the patient demand as well. So this one is the good example of the BiPAP ST. So it's more comfortable, especially if the patient has a uh, good um, spontaneous breathing compliance. So it's, it's good for the patient to, to use the BiPAP ST to give more comfort to the patient as well.
thì cái thời gian hít vào chính là một giây thì kết thúc một giây thì nó sẽ chuyển sang thì người ta cái nhịp thở thứ hai có một cái chiếc gương của bệnh nhân và cái hai thang này hoàn toàn phụ thuộc vào bệnh nhân cái thở trả lại cho bệnh nhân quyết định hoàn toàn có thể lúc nào bệnh nhân có bốn thở ra thì cái thở sẽ điều chỉnh cho cho bệnh nhân thì cái chế độ thở này sẽ phù hợp hơn cho những bệnh nhân và chiều cao Okay, so uh, basically the modes of ventilation for the non-invasive ventilation is the CPAP and the BiPAP. So in some ventilator, they, they combining some uh, pressure and volume modes. So one of our uh, combination is the ABAPs. So this is this is my last slide. So I think I'm I'm, I'm finished. <laughs> okay. So uh, ABAPs average volume assured pressure support. We combine the volume and the pressure. So we put it together, came up with the ABAPs. So what is the ABAPs means? So in the ABAPs, instead of controlling the I type, the IPAP, inspiratory positive airway pressure, so you have your tidal volume setting. Okay, here. Okay, like uh, Dr. Sun uh, discussed, discussed earlier, the tidal volume computation. So instead of IPAP, we're using the direct tidal volume setting. So but you have to set the maximum pressure and minimum pressure for the machine itself to automatically adjust based on your um, pressure setting here. So like for example, this one is the is best for um, uh, OHS, obese hypoventilation syndrome or COPD patient. If you want to maintain the tidal volume, okay, especially for the COPD, so if the COPD uh, has a decrease in compliance, it will increase, shoot up also the CO2 level. So if you want to maintain the, the, the tidal volume, of your patient, so you can use the ABAPs. So this one is basically uh, targeted tidal volume. The machine itself will automatically adjust if there is a uh, gap or uh, decrease in compliance, the machine will add pressure support to compensate for the tidal volume loss. So this one is a good example, the graphs here. So we have the uh, tidal volume decrease. This one is the 500 setting decrease then the ventilator itself will automatically adjust, deliver more pressure, so increase volume, increase volume, and then finally it increases to 500 tidal volume setting. So basically this one is the targeted tidal volume modes of ventilation, ABAPs. <laughs> tuy nhiên trong một số cái trường hợp ví dụ như, như bệnh nhân siêu vi bệnh nhân bệnh nhân béo phì cũng như bệnh phụ thì khi thay đổi kinh tế hoặc là thay đổi cái cái độ giãn nở của ruột thì cùng một mức áp được hỗ trợ như thế thì sẽ tinh giảm được nó sẽ kém đi và nếu mà trong phẫu thuật an tác này thì người ta sẽ nhận biết được cái cái, cái vấn đề sẽ tích bệnh nhân cũng được nó, nó giảm đi và sẽ máy thở sẽ tiếp tục Okay. Okay, so this, this is my last slide. So any questions? So if you want, I can also uh, share to you my slides, my presentation. So I'll give this to uh, Dr. Sun. So you can ask for the copy for this presentation as well. So thank you very much for the opportunity again. Any questions? Okay. Yep, they can use the BIPAP uh, PCV or ST to your COPD patient. But
for the PCB, uh, because if you se select the PCB mode, what you set is what you get. The pressure, the, the pressure that you set, the, 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 the ventilator automatically deliver what, what the, the, setting, the setup you set, okay? Like assist control mode, what you set is what you get. The PCB is, uh, is a, a perfect mode for the patient having a restrictive lungs, stiff lungs. Okay? If you want to control the, the compliance, also you want to control the eye time, the fixed eye time, you go for the PCB. But if the patient has a spontaneous breathing and then the patient can sustain the eye time, much better to go to ST. Because, like what I said earlier, like what uh, here in my last slide, here, here. So if you if you're using PCB and then you, you can notice this one from every time the patient the, the ventilator keep on alarming and then the, the patient is having difficulty of uh, exhaling during uh, the patient wants to uh, to shorten the eye time. So meaning the patient wants to uh, to play with the, the eye time respiratory time. So it's better if you want to uh, to to uh, stay with the PCB you can adjust the eye time. So you can prolong the eye time to, uh, to mimic the, the, the patient inspiratory breathing. Yeah, or you can shift to the BiPAP ST. Okay, so that your patient has a full control of your eye time as well. Yeah, so maybe the patient can, can do longer or shorter, so he has a full control of the eye time if you're using the ST. But in my experience, um, uh, in the hospital, we, we normally use the PCB instead of the ST because we're using different ventilator. <laughs> so uh, we're using the bi-PASIC. Bi -PASIC. Uh, we have the bi-PASIC in the bi-level, right? So bi but it's, 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 it's uh, kind of uh, similar, but we're using the bi pcb before. So the, the, the most com the problem is the, sometimes the patient wants to do a, a longer eye time or shorter eye time. So you can do the adjustment of the eye time if you can see the here, the, the sharp tooth that I So In addition, uh, doctor, if the patient is um, is uh, able to, to to sustain the eye time, respiratory time, so might as well um, go to BiPAP ST mode yeah, for to give more patient comfort as well. Okay, thank you for. Uh,
nhưng mà lựa chọn mà mình lại không hiểu thì giống như tôi nói về câu chuyện về xe mẹ các bạn có rất nhiều option và cái người việt mình cũng khá nhiều option là là cả cả thích nhưng mà option này chả nên chỉ phải đến đáp lại như vậy sẽ có những cái máy thở và biết các bạn nếu như các bạn phát tâm thì bạn sẽ thấy là rất nhiều người đã nói trước bạn uh, chơi với các bạn cái sử dụng cái máy thì có rất nhiều máy nước <cười> trong đó họ đặt tất cả các option tức là có cái gì không có rồi muốn trên đời để nó nhưng mà vì là cái tiền mua của mình ấy được từ gói gói thầu của mình thì lại là gói thầu không phải cao cấp do đó họ sẽ không cần đến full option họ sẽ chọn một cái số cái option ra để cho chúng ta thực hiện trên máy thôi thế thì bạn mà quen với em kỹ sư các bạn em ơi đến mở khóa chạy nghĩa là chúng ta phát là chúng ta sử dụng một full option trong khi chúng ta mua thì cái điều sẽ thường xuyên xảy ra như vậy nên thế là do là chúng ta phải chú ý hơn một tí, quan tâm một tí thì chúng ta sẽ được hiểu được giống như cái xe của các bạn là các bạn là muốn rút rất nhiều ổ chuyển thì sẽ có chuyện đó này nhưng mà quen với anh đã hạ thì rất là đáng khó. Ok, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I think that uh, we are out of time so we go to the next one. Okay. Thank you. À, như vậy là chúng ta sẽ có phần uh, 15 phút à, cái đồng hồ thì nó mới sang thế là tôi tôi cứ nhìn theo cái đồng hồ này thì mình có thể cái nền nó mới nét thì thì chúng ta sẽ có 15 phút để giải đáp nó thì nó cứ theo cái đồng hồ cái đi thì là tám tám thì đến gần khoảng mười một giờ đó chúng ta quay lại đến cái cái dài này số mười một tôi cũng biết